Hello there everybody and welcome to the next episode of Stefan's Kitchen and today we're going to be making lasagna and this is going to be a really thick deep dish lasagna as well and for those of you who uh, like to have the recipe I'm going to actually be putting it in the description from now on so first off we're going to start off with about two pounds of ground beef and it doesn't matter if it's lean or extra lean I usually just go for a lean usually and also one pound of uh, ground pork as well. So right now I just set up a pot of boiling water so that I can actually boil these oven ready lasagna noodles and I like to cook them a little bit about 10 minutes just so that way I know that uh, they won't be hard or crunchy when I go to uh, use them for lasagna. And as you can see the other ingredients we have there I have five small, well actually it's six tubs but I only use five altogether. Uh, of cottage cheese and another time I will do this recipe over again with fresh noodles and uh, ricotta cheese as well. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to brown up my ground beef and my ground pork. Just put them directly into your pan and as you can see here I just threw both of them in at the same time doesn't really matter and next what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go and grab your salt and uh, I always use the same salt as always. Uh, sea salt is better than iodized salt. I'll explain that some other time. But uh, yeah, just season your meat. Um, and that's another thing. People have to season to the way they want to season. This is black pepper, again, the same one I usually use. Um, but yeah, you have to season to, to your flavor desire because I might use a teaspoon of salt. You might want a teaspoon and a half. You might only want a half a teaspoon. And well, usually I don't think I use a teaspoon of salt. That's an awful lot. But, uh, well, depending on the size of the meal that you're making, of course, as well. But, I mean, as you can see, I'm not using a teaspoon. I probably used about a teaspoon of pepper, though. And then, again, I've got some garlic powder. So, that'll also... These, these are my three key seasonings. That's what I use in almost everything because it seasons everything so well. And I like garlic on pretty much everything. And because it's powder, it's not as overpowering as fresh garlic. So, anyways, now that the... Uh, water has been boiled I'm going to cook the noodles like I said for about 10 minutes so just so that they soften up and that I know that they won't be hard and crunchy in our lasagna and like I said just throw them all in at the same time it doesn't really take them long to absorb the hot water and to start bending and next you're going to want to take your two onions and chop them up uh, well pretty much however you like them fine or regular dice it doesn't really matter as you can see there I'm doing about a dice there so, because, uh, I mean, I love onion. I really do. <laughs> Onion's good in everything. It gives good flavor to everything. It's, there's a reason why it's one of the three key vegetables when you're uh, making flavoring agents, along with usually celery and carrots as well, which I'm sure I'll probably put up a video about mirepoix and stuff some other time. But for now, we're going to focus on some lasagna. And as you can see, my meat is burning up really nicely right there. And you will want to drain that off uh, eventually. Try and drain off as much of the grease and fat from that as you can because you will end up having a greasy uh, lasagna as well. Now I added about a teaspoon, sorry, a tablespoon of, uh, of parsley. And I'm also going to be adding uh, a tablespoon of oregano to the mix. That gives that really lovely... Italian flavor. I really like it. Uh, oh, I guess the first thing I added was basil, sorry, and a tablespoon of basil as well. A tablespoon of each is what I use here. And next, I'm just going to use a plain pa uh, can of mushrooms, and I just use the pieces and stems because the button ones usually, you know, they're too big and they're just going to be big clumps in your lasagna. You don't really want that. But you can always use fresh ones. And like I said, when I go to do another one with the fresh noodles and everything, I'm going to use all fresh ingredients just to show you guys the difference. And believe me, the difference between this kind of lasagna, these are just two cans of uh, tomato sauce that I'm going to be uh, putting directly in with the meat. And there's some uh, thick and zesty. And of course, we're going to keep stirring our mixture just to make sure the flavors go all the way through. But as I was saying, the difference between a uh, this kind of lasagna and one that uses fresh noodles um, fresh ricotta cheese and fresh mushrooms fresh tomatoes and all that it, it, there it really is a huge difference and uh, once I put up those recipes uh, I'll, obviously I'll ask you guys to go and try them yourselves and uh, 
you'll you'll see the difference yourselves. And uh, I'm actually kind of be looking forward to that because uh, people don't realize how much fresh ingredients actually do impact the flavoring of your meal and how everything tastes. And oh, having a bit of trouble here with the camera, <laughs> but that's basically what you want your uh, your ground beef mixture to look like, more or less. Uh, you don't want it to be too uh, saucy and, I guess, for lack of better terms, muddy, because then you're just gonna have uh, a really runny lasagna. You don't really want that. You want your lasagna to to stick and be a nice solid piece when you're gonna go and eat it. Now I was just showing you one of these deep dish pans that I just bought at uh, the Dominion that I went and get some of my groceries at. They also have these long dishes and uh, I, I, when I was looking at them I was thinking that's the perfect lasagna pan that, and that's exactly what I bought it for was for lasagna because I was I was so happy with the, the you know exact size of it. It was perfect for what I wanted. So. So now that we have the, the first layer of noodles down, what you want to do, and leave a bit of room between the noodles. You don't want them tight or anything like that because you don't want them to be dry in the bottom. You want some of that sauce to run underneath the noodle to keep it, uh, again, for lack of better terms, lubricated on the bottom so it doesn't stick to the bottom of your pan and it comes along with your lasagna when you're taking up a single piece for somebody. And like I said, just keep spooning the, uh, your first layer of mixture. You don't want your entire lot in there. You're going to want about uh, about half, I would imagine. So take about half your mixture and lay it down over your noodles. And once you're happy with uh, the amount of sauce you have laid down, and make sure it's nice and evenly distributed across, so again, so you have a, that nice, perfect-looking piece when you go to cut, obviously. <laughs> And uh, next what we're going to do is we're going to take our more noodles and make a whole new layer. And again, you don't have to worry too much about this because, you know, you're going to want some of the moisture to go in between these layers as well so that, you know, everything is well melded together. Now, once you get your noodles down, what you're going to want to do next is open up your uh, tubs of cottage cheese and I use regular don't worry about using light cottage cheese it's not that much more fat uh, and besides you're eating lasagna you that's one thing you probably shouldn't worry about especially you with using this much cottage cheese <laughs> but another thing that works very well is you can use the 500 milliliter tubs these are 250 mils so you could probably use two yeah, well, the equivalency would be two 500 milliliter tubs and one small 250. So you could always do that as well. And that's just basically how I went about doing it. I mean, you could probably get away with just using two large containers, uh, the 500 mils, or you could, you know, maybe you could use more depending on how big your pan is or, you know, how much cheese you want compared. And, uh, and like I said, the way that it worked out for me was that uh, five of the six were more than enough for me. It was the perfect layer of cottage cheese in the middle, and I was pretty happy with that. Now, although I didn't do it here, really, um, once you have your cheese evenly distributed across, and again, you want to make that as level as possible and, you know, make it even, um, you can also season the cheese a little bit if you'd like. Um, seasonings like uh, oregano or basil, parsley, now, parsley doesn't really have that much flavor, but uh, I don't usually agree with that. But, I mean, you can put anything on there. Tarragon works really well. I mean, even salt and pepper is fine if you just want to season it. Um, but, anyways, once you finish that, you're going to put on your next layer of noodles. Now that we're almost finished, you can also preheat your oven to 350 degrees so that it's nice and warm for the time uh, your lasagna goes into the oven. And now that we have that last layer of noodles finished, we're going to finish it up with one last layer of meat sauce. And right here is probably where you're going to use the remainder of your meat sauce, uh, just spreading it out on the top. And again, when you're spreading it out like this, you want to be careful. Even though it's not too saucy right now, once it gets in the oven, uh, the heat starts uh, making a bubble, almost boiling. And... Uh, you're going to want to be careful not to put it all the way up to the top of your lid because if you do, there's a really good chance that it's going to bubble over and then you're going to get sauce and everything on the inside of your oven and it's just, no one likes to clean their oven. It's not fun, obviously. So, I mean, even if you have a self-cleaning one, it's still not fun. <laughs> but, um, yeah, like I said, you're going to want to be careful. Don't uh, don't put it right to the very top. Leave, like, uh, 
say, a centimeter or so, so that if it starts to bubble, it doesn't bubble over the top of your pan. Plus, you're also going to be putting, uh, applying cheese onto it afterwards, after it goes into the oven, so uh, you're going to want that extra room for the cheese to go on as well. Since this is the last layer, you, once it's evenly distributed, put it into your oven, uh, again, at the 350 degrees, and let it cook for about an hour. Once the uh, lasagna has been cooked for a full hour, then you can take it out and you can use, well, whatever kind of cheese you want. Usually, a lot of people use mozzarella. I went to get mozzarella, and where I'm living in Newfoundland, there's not that much uh, in the stores, I guess. So once people get going, uh, they grab a lot of the stuff that's on special. So cheese was on special that week, so there was no mozzarella cheese left, so I used Monterey Jack. And as I was saying in the nachos video, you can just grate directly in the middle so then that way you don't spill all over the counter and you don't have to have a plate to go grating your cheese on to make more dishes for yourself. Not only that, but then you can just, you know, take it upon yourself to spread the cheese out so then that way it's more evenly distributed. And as you can tell from uh, me using the words over and over and over again, that uh, making your lasagna um, as even as possible is obviously going to yield you the best results. So once your cheese has been spread out, you can put the lasagna right back into the oven. I probably shouldn't leave it open too long like that because you're just letting all that heat out. <laughs> and I'm not going to give you uh, I'm not going to give you a specific time to leave it in there because everybody's ovens are different. But you can uh, turn up the heat a little bit more, say to about 400, and once the cheese melts down like it is, as you can see here in mine, then your lasagna is done. Now, in order to get a result like this you're going to want to leave your lasagna for at least two hours so that it gets a chance to set up. That way you have the perfect slice of lasagna. See how the layers, you can see each individual layer, meat and sauce, cheese, meat and sauce. You can even see the layers of the noodle as well. And even the bottom noodle came, came out as perfectly. So I was pretty happy with this lasagna, and I think everybody else will be too. So like I said, just let your lasagna have the chance to set up, and I think you'll be happy with the results. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next episode.